Imagine this, a dark plume of ash rises from beneath the earth, casting a shadow over Melbourne's iconic skyline. Lava begins to ooze through the cracks in the streets, slowly consuming the bustling cityscape. Burke Street, once crowded with people, turns into a river of molten rock. While this may seem like a scene from a disaster movie, scientists warn it's not entirely beyond the realm of possibility. Melbourne's relationship with volcanic activity goes deeper than most of its residents realise. Beneath the vibrant city lies a sleeping giant, one that has awoken numerous times over the past 21 million years, shaping the landscape in ways that have defined not just Melbourne but much of Western Victoria. The region is covered in the remnants of past volcanic eruptions, some quite recent in geological terms. These recent events have laid the groundwork for a city built atop a sleeping volcanic province, tied to the Cosgrove hotspot, which still has the potential to awaken in the future. Further back, we can link the eruptions that occurred here 21 million years ago to the formation of the Port Phillip Sunklands, an event of immense tectonic activity triggered the gradual subsidence of the land now occupied by Port Phillip Bay, creating a large structural depression. This process, which occurred during the early Miocene, coincided with volcanic activity in the region, as molten rock pushed its way through thinning crust creating a series of eruptions that laid down vast fields of basalt, including the telemarine basalt. As tectonic forces stretched and pulled the region apart, lava flowed into low-lying areas, carving out the geological framework we now recognise as Melbourne's western plains. This subsidence continued over millions of years, deepening the basin that would eventually fill with seawater and form Port Phillip Bay. The relationship between volcanic activity and subsidence is closely intertwined. As the land subsided, the thinning crust allowed volcanic materials to rise, creating not just individual eruptions, but an interconnected system of volcanic and tectonic events. These forces reshaped the landscape, lowering the land around what is now the bay and covering the surrounding region with layers of lava and volcanic ash. When people think of volcanoes, Melbourne is not the first place that comes to mind. Instead, thoughts might drift to places like Indonesia or Hawaii, where volcanoes dominate the landscape. However, Melbourne's geological history tells a different story, one of a volcanic past that could still influence its future. Melbourne sits on the edge of the newer volcanics province, a vast volcanic region covering 15,000 square kilometres from Melbourne's western suburbs through western Victoria. This region has experienced thousands of eruptions over the last 6 million years, and while none have occurred in the time since Europeans arrived, the geological evidence is undeniable. Volcanic activity in Melbourne began as early as the Miocene Epoch, with lava flows and volcanic vents scattered across the landscape. One of the key volcanic features in Melbourne is the telemarine basalt, which erupted during the early Miocene, between 23 and 16 million years ago. This basalt flowed through what is now the city's central business district, covering vast areas with thick layers of lava. These flows have either been buried beneath Melbourne's modern infrastructure or eroded by the forces of the era, but traces of it are still there, silent and ancient reminders of a volatile past. But the activity didn't stop there. Over the last 6 million years, more volcanic eruptions have reshaped the region. Thick dominant lava flows can still be found in suburbs such as Essendon North, Maribyrnong and Brunswick, all within close proximity to the city centre. These flows formed as part of the ongoing volcanic activity connected to the Cosgrove hotspot, a hotspot of volcanic heat that has moved slowly across the Australian continent over millions of years, leaving behind a trail of volcanic features. One particularly interesting moment came during the construction of the Southern Cross Railway Station, where workers cut through a small ancient volcanic vent. This discovery, right in the heart of Melbourne, serves as a tangible reminder that the city itself is built on volcanic ground. As mentioned before, much of the volcanic activity that has shaped Melbourne and the surrounding region is believed to be related to the Cosgrove hotspot, a slow-moving plume of hot mantle material beneath the Earth's crust. Hotspots are responsible for some of the most significant volcanic activity on Earth, such as the formation of the Hawaiian Islands. While hotspots are often associated with oceanic volcanoes, the Cosgrove hotspot has left its mark on the Australian continent. As the Australian tectonic plate moves northward, the Cosgrove hotspot has remained relatively stationary, creating a series of volcanic events that stretch from across much of the middle to western parts of Victoria. The volcanic activity that Melbourne has seen over the past 6 million years is part of this larger pattern of eruptions. 
The most recent volcanic eruptions in Australia, related to this hotspot, occurred only about 5,000 years ago at Mount Gambier, near the border of Victoria and South Australia. This eruption was witnessed by Indigenous Australians, who incorporated the event into their oral histories. If such an eruption could occur so recently, the possibility of future activity, even within Melbourne CBD, cannot be ruled out. Let's explore what might happen if Melbourne's dormant volcanic activity were to reawaken. While it is difficult to predict the exact location of a future eruption, volcanic fields like the newer Volcanics province often see eruptions occur in new locations rather than at existing vents. This means a volcanic eruption could happen anywhere across the volcanic field, including under the city itself. In the heart of the CBD, you might see the ground start to tremble as magma forces its way to the surface. Earthquakes, a common precursor to volcanic eruptions, would likely rattle the city as cracks form in the Earth's crust. The first sign of trouble could be a plume of ash rising from the ground and turning the blue sky a dark grey. Traffic would come to a halt and panic would spread as people try to make sense of the unfolding disaster. Within hours the magma would break through the surface, and lava could begin to flow down the streets. While Hollywood movies often depict explosive eruptions with towering plumes of lava and ash, the reality in Melbourne would likely be less dramatic but equally destructive. Most of the volcanic activity in the newer Volcanics province is basaltic, which means the lava would flow slowly but relentlessly. Buildings in its path would be consumed, their foundations cracking and melting as the lava advances. In the case of an eruption near the CBD, the lava flow could stretch across several kilometres, consuming roads, railways and even landmarks like Federation Square and Flinders Street Station. Ashfall would blanket the city, turning day into night and causing respiratory issues for anyone caught outdoors. The destruction wouldn't stop there, an eruption could trigger fires, further compounding the chaos. As lava interacts with the city's infrastructure, gas pipelines, electrical grids and sewage systems, explosions and hazardous fumes could spread across the city. Emergency services would be overwhelmed, and mass evacuations would be necessary to save lives. But Melbourne is not unprepared. Geologists have long studied the volcanic risks in the region, and while the likelihood of an eruption is low, emergency plans do exist. In the event of an eruption, the city would likely have a few hours to respond after the first signs of volcanic activity. This window would be critical for evacuating residents, securing vital infrastructure, and minimising the damage. While the likelihood of a volcanic eruption in Melbourne CBD remains small, the city's geological history proves that it is not impossible. The layers of basalt beneath our feet, the volcanic vents cut through during construction, and the lava flows that stretch across the suburbs all tell a story of a city built on volcanic ground. And though the earth has been quiet for thousands of years, the possibility of an eruption remains. Dormant, but not gone. As we walk through the streets of Melbourne, it's easy to forget the ancient forces that shaped this land. But every now and then, when we look at the rugged basalt cliffs of Brimbang Park or the volcanic hills near Sunbury, we are reminded that the earth is alive, and its power is always there, waiting beneath the surface. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.